What up, witches? Oh, uh, why did I do that? No, I'm not being weird and cringe. Okay, no, I am being weird and cringy with my intro, but I'm not just being weird and cringy with my intro. Today, we are gonna have a little bit of a giggle in this video and look at this brilliant book I found in a local bookshop called The Witch's Journal. It's like an introduction to all things Wicca and witchcraft and casting spells. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I have mixed feelings about this book, right? Because on the one hand, yeah, it's a bit silly and we can kind of like talk about this and have a bit of a laugh about it. You know, they have whole sections on like what kind of candles to use in your spells for them to be the most effective and stuff like that. And as logical people, we know this stuff isn't real, but at the same time, there's some kind of cute bits in here about like not hurting other people and being good people and not using your powers for bad that I think, you know, a lot of modern religions could actually learn something from. And so I figured in a kind of unplanned, unscripted video, I'm just going to be having a look at some passages in this book that I've highlighted, reading them out to you, and we can just have a little bit of a giggle about it. And, you know, no disrespect to people who actually believe in this stuff. I wish some of this stuff was real, but hopefully we can just have a little bit of a giggle about this today and it'll be a nice, fun, non-heavy video. So it opens with a nice little introduction about witchcraft and wicca, and I've got to say, actually, this book is really beautifully made. It's like really nicely like illustrated and laid out, and I do actually really like it in that respect. <laughs> Don't judge me. But it starts with a little introduction to the topic. If you're new to being a witch, Every witch spends her life gathering little bits of knowledge, spells, charms, potions, and lore. Kyra, do you want to stop snoring, baby? No, that's okay then. <laughs> Sorry, if you can hear her grumbling down there. It says, most witches today are now self-taught. There's no need to be initiated or trained by an elder. Instead, you can create your own system based on your beliefs, knowledge, and experience. Which I think is kind of a little bit self-empowering, you know? I kind of like that. Your intuition is the most important magical tool that you possess. Follow it, and it will guide you well on your magical path. Witchcraft doesn't require any special skills, talents, or supernatural powers. It is actually based on the most natural thing in the world, your energy and will, as well as the energy of every other thing on the planet and in the heavens. If you have faith in your ability to use magic, you will succeed as a witch. Oh, I've got to say, for all it's kind of like a bunch of woo about like energy and spirits and all that kind of thing, like I say, it's a little bit empowering and it can kind of get behind that aspect of it. They do have a one that this book isn't going to be a complete miracle worker. You can't just expect the spells to work. <laughs> That's so stupid, I know. But it says, Despite your best intentions, sometimes spells do not turn out as planned. You have to be careful not to leave the door too wide open when crafting spells. The gods operate on a different time frame than we do, so specify how soon you wish to receive your result. Be reasonable in your request. Most spells cannot be granted overnight. You may also find that a spell doesn't work at all. When a spell fails, it's usually because the gods determined that it was not the best course of action for you. Or they may allow a spell to succeed, only for you to realise that you should not have performed it in the first place. Consider it a lesson learned and then move on with your life and your magical practice. As long as you intend to do no harm, no spell can go too horribly awry. <laughs> so this is kind of like their get out of jail free card, you know? Um, a lot of religions use this stuff where like, if you pray to God and get what you want, then it was the praying that worked. But if you pray to God and don't get what you want, then it, it just wasn't God's will, you know? He ultimately has the power in every situation. It's a, it's a very similar kind of thing and I do find it funny. They also have this really important chapter on what is magic, which I think is a very important place to start. It reads, magic is both a science and an art, so you know it's legit. It is a science in the sense that performing a spell requires research and an awareness of the methods of witchcraft. Not exactly what science is, but I'll let you have it this once. It is an art in the sense that you need to follow your intuition and be creative. When practicing magic, you blend the two to bend the natural forces to your will and bring about your desired outcome. Ooh. Apparently there are four types of magic. Folk magic includes old superstitions and folk practices and continues to have power today, such as burying a statue of St. Joseph upside down in your garden to speed up the sale of a house. Yeah, totally see how that would work. 
Natural magic is the use of herbs, stones, and candles to direct energy. Natural man magic also incorporates the moon, sun, and planets. Ceremonial magic entails performing rituals using specific props and speaking elaborate words. It is often called high magic. And sympathetic magic is the use of objects that represent your desired outcome. For example, turning on the shower to make it rain. <laughs> now I know that's like, a, you know, you turn on the shower to make it rain outside, but I just, I have this picture of someone like turning on their shower and being like, look, it's raining, I'm wet. <laughs> <laughs> no, stupid, don't judge me. And then it goes on to the ethics of witchcraft. And this is where I've got to say, like, this stuff, I think a lot of religions could learn a lot from it. Because instead of strict rules about, like, you must kill your firstborn son on this Sunday of every other month, like, instead of, okay, not that specifically, but instead of that kind of stuff, and instead of stories about, like, killing this many children, sacrificing these animals, and doing this and doing this, and stoning the woman who did this, and poisoning the woman who did this, and so on. Instead of all that stuff, they have a very nice, simple rule that they just call the golden rule. Treat others as you'd like them to treat you. Great. It's perfect. It's simple. I like it. A lot of religions could learn from that. Seriously. Apparently, the Wiccan Reed first appeared as a 26-line poem poem in Earth Religion News in 1974. It's usually summarised as the last line. And it harm none, do what thou wilt. Which basically means do what you want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. Which I think is pretty awesome and it's a pretty great rule to live by, Wiccan or not, you know? What is nice as well as they caveat that the tricky part is that no one includes you. Avoid casting spells that will harm yourself. So there you go. That is the basics of uh, like Wiccans and witchcraft and how, um, you know, you, you got to do good and look after other people. And I kind of like that. Uh, there are some other kind of like funny little bits in here, <laughs> like this stuff about how. Uh, so they, they go on and they, they talk about like specific cell, uh, spells, props for certain spells, how you can predict the future with runes and astrology and scrying and um, all sorts of stuff like that. It's, it's a really kind of like funny little read, but in, in amongst the stuff that is like absolute rubbish, like how this stone will get you pregnant if you rub it on your belly, in amongst all that stuff there's actually some really interesting little bits here about like the history of like Wiccan beliefs and stuff, and just the history of kind of religion in general, which you know, it's actually kind of interesting. Of course, then they go and ruin it all with lines like this. The moon is the most important heavenly body to consider when casting spells. It exerts enormous influence over the earth, governing the tides, crops, and certain aspects of the human body, and therefore has a strong influence on magic. By monitoring the moon's phases and being aware of its transit through the heavens, you can cast a spell to use the moon to its best advantage. The new moon is best for spells relating to the beginning of new things. If you plan to do a multi-day spell with a positive goal in mind, then you could start on the new moon and work forwards. Buddy, Kyra, no. Oh my god, she was just eating my double-sided tape. No, naughty. There's not a toy. Your toys are outside if you want them. You little beast. Hello. Come, come up. Come on. Come on, Kyra. Up, baby. Up. Good girl. Well done. Well done, I'm proud of you. Oh, you can't see her on camera, she's too low. Basically, she's sat in my little desk chair spinning around. Bless her. You little cutie, aren't you? Hello, cutie. Here you are. Here you are. Can you cast a spell? Are you a witch? Yes. A witch. A witchy witch. Oh, hello. Hello. Careful. Careful. Sorry. Got you. I got you. And then, of course, there are the warnings as well about how uh, there are numerous opportunities to cast spells at a beneficial time. You should also be aware of certain days or times when magic should be avoided if possible. Spells can have an unexpected or undesired result when the moon is void, of course, or Mercury is in retrograde. Oh, of course, yeah. Everyone knows that, right? The effects of other retrograde planets should also be considered, but will have less of an impact. Oh, Mercury's the big one, obviously. Uh, let's see what it says about Mercury, since it's so powerful. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. That is true and travel swiftly around it. Also true, which is probably how it came to be associated with the fleet-footed god Mercury. Okay. Mercury's assistance can be inconsistent, so look to balance its negative properties with another planet's more peaceful energy. Mercury's magical associations are 
communication, travel, intellect and learning, mental perception, teaching, writing, creativity, memory, cleverness, reasoning, arguments, sarcasm and cynicism, trickery and thievery. There you go. I figured we would just end this video by looking at some uh, specific little bits of spell work. Apparently there are certain types of spell. For example, manifesting spells. Uh, anything you want to attract into your life calls for a manifesting spell. Most witches cast a large number of manifesting spells. Manifesting should be for uh, performed between the new and full moons. Banishing spells are the opposite of manifesting. You don't say. Use banishing spells to rid your life of something. Banishing rituals are typically performed between the new and full moons. The dark moon, the period directly before the new moon, is especially powerful. It can be difficult to determine whether you should banish an old situation or manifest a new one. If you're not sure, consider the emotional impact. If your emotions are blocking the goal, then banish. If you simply have not been lucky enough to achieve what you want, manifest it. You can also banish blocks and then manifest your goal. I feel like so much of this just comes comes down to kind of like placebo effect and like if you think something's working as a spell it's probably because you've just changed your mindset about it or you feel empowered to do something about it now like let's be honest there's no chance these spells actually work it's probably all just to do with um getting people in the right frame of mind and stuff and in that respect I kind of don't hate it because this stuff isn't harming anyone yeah, some people might waste a bit of money on it, some people might waste a bit of time on it, but if they're having fun with it, they're not harming anyone, and it's helping them feel empowered, and helping them take control of their life, and helping them act on certain things, then maybe it's not so bad, you know? <laughs> they even have a section here on love spells. Apparently love spells can be simple or complicated, but if pursued with a pure heart, they are nearly always effective. And then, of course, there's the ethics of love spells. You cannot force someone to love you, so you should never ask for the heart of a specific person. If you try anyway, you might wind up three times more in love with them than they are with you. You'll also never be able to trust that the love is true. It's actually really good advice. Not the spell bit, but like, the point about if you kind of force someone to be with you, then how do you know they really want to be with you, you know, that kind of thing. Instead, wait until you're ready to find love, but are not interested in a specific person, and then cast a love spell for an ideal mate. Again, I don't think this is actually going to work as a spell, but I can kind of see how this would help people, you know, if they think, you know, I'm in a good place in my life, I'm ready to be in a relationship, I don't have, you know, anyone particular in mind, but I'm going to cast this spell, and then it gets that person into the right mindset to maybe be open to meeting new people, maybe consider dating people they haven't considered before, um, maybe they're just on the lookout for someone, they're just opening themselves up to new opportunities and getting in the right mindset to maybe meet someone new. I can see how it would help on a kind of personal level. That said, the spell for meeting your perfect partner includes casting a circle and call the quarters. Invite the love goddess of your choice to join you, saying, Goddess, please join me on this blessed night. Lend me your energy as I perform this rite. Help me find the mate I desire. Let him or her fulfill the qual qualities I require. Oh, it even rhymes a little bit. Write a list of all the qualities you want in a mate onto the parchment paper with a red pen. Holding the paper in your hands, feel the satisfaction and joy that the relationship will produce. Light the parchment in the candle flame and then drop it into the cauldron to burn away. Okay, slight fire hazard here, so just, just be careful, alright? Release the goddess saying, Goddess, thank you for joining me in this quest. <laughs> like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and thank you for bring, bringing me the mate I request. Farewell and blessed be. Let the candle burn down, scatter the ashes in a moving body of water or bury them in the garden. Be on the lookout for your new partner. Get out and date. Your partner is out there, but you have to help. You could just boil this whole thing down to that last line. Your partner is out there, but you have to help. But you know, if the rest helps get you in the right mindset, as long as you don't burn down your house, I think you're fine. <laughs> There's so about dreaming of your future husband. Love charms, love herbs. Oh, yeah. The magic of food. Oh, beauty spells. I could do with a few of these. Weight loss charms. Although weight loss requires exercise and a change of diet, say these three charms whenever necessary to help with motivations. I have power over food. Food does not rule me. My body is a gift and I respect it. 
I see the beauty in myself and reflect it to the world. Again, this is actually really good advice. Like, they're not charms in the sense that they're gonna, like, you know, help these mar magical spiritual energies and gods come down and help you and empower you. That's not gonna happen. But if it makes you feel good about yourself, and remember that you have control over your body, like, even if you think you don't, you do. If it reminds you of that sort of stuff, then I say go for it, you know? The difficult stuff for me comes in the sections like this about like healing spells. I think it can get really dangerous when people forgo proper medicine and treatment in favour of, you know, magic. This is where it can get a little bit difficult, um, but again, this book does a pretty decent job of saying, you know, also go see a doctor. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's kind of important. There is like a whole section on like magical tools and things like that that could be quite funny to look at about things like how to make a broom, <laughs> like using cauldrons, uh, wands, chalices, that sort of stuff that could be quite fun to look at for a little giggle. So if you want me to make another uh, video on this book, I can do. I also have a second book just simply titled The Book of Spells uh, that we could have a look at in a video which has some very like funny little spells in here for um oh, doing all sorts of stuff again it's like a beautifully designed book inside like it's absolutely gorgeous like i love the illustrations and the style and everything like look at this like oh oh apple and sex oh interesting uh page to open that on there a little freudian slip on my fault was it um no but these yeah, this sort of stuff, I think, as long as it's not harming anyone, if it's empowering you on a personal level, I really don't have an issue with it. Uh, the one issue I do have is where people do try and use this stuff instead of seeing a doctor or taking proper medicine or getting proper treatment. That's the stuff that worries me and that I do have an issue with. But just on, um, you know, on a light, fun kind of level of people just wanting to do it for a bit of a giggle, for a little bit of self-empowerment, I really don't have an issue with it. And uh, like I say, like no disrespect to those people at all in this video, at least not intended. Oh, one more thing before I disappear as well, a um, little bit of shameless promotion of my friends. Um, my friends Daisy and carrie -Anne are touring around America at the minute. Uh, they're two musicians, absolutely like amazingly wonderful, talented, beautiful ladies. Uh, they're so good and I thoroughly recommend if you're in any of the areas they're playing, go see them, support them a little bit, say hi, tell them I sent you and they'll give you a big hug from me. Um, and I'll leave their like tour dates and the places that they're playing down in the description below. But if you do want to go and support my friends, then please do, because like I say, they're amazing people and they deserve all the love and support in the world. Anyway, that is me done for today. Um, thank you so, so much for watching and taking the time out to watch this video. If you liked it, you can drop me a like below. It would make me feel quite good, but you know, no pressure or anything. Um, and apparently I don't remind people to subscribe to my channel enough. So if you've been here a while and you've not subscribed, please subscribe, please. Don't make me cast a spell. But seriously, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you so much for watching today. A huge thank you goes out to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Gambit in the Chauffeur, Day Sean, Mark Darner, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepherd, Pixelated Skeptic, Jaylee Moore, Religion's BS, Sir Michael Moore, Matthew Minamar, Sage Villarreal, and Greg Glad. Don't forget to check out all my merch available over on Teespring and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me in the future. Thanks a lot, guys.